canning the beans this way does look really nice. Hi you guys, welcome back to Kirshner Farmstead. If you are new to our channel, my name is Kirsty, and today we are going to be pressure canning dragon tongue bush beans, okay? So beans are a super simple um, thing to pressure can. It is very little ingredients. It's just beans and water and salt. So this is a great beginner recipe. Um, Right now, I am going to be cutting off all of the ends. These are stringless also, so you don't have to worry about getting the strings out of them. Um, so all I'm going to be doing is snipping off both of the ends because we are at the end of the season. So uh, they are a little, they are a little harder than like early season beans, but it's totally perfect to can because the pressure canner cooks them really well. <laughs> I was actually going to make a video specifically just for the dragon tongue beans, but I did decide, I thought, okay, well, why don't we just talk about it, um, talk about them while I do a canning video. Then two birds with one stone, right? <laughs> so the dragon tongue bean has been a staple on our farm for the past five years. Uh, we started growing them just as a trial with a bunch of other different beans and we fell in love with them. They produce for us every year, no matter what. Bad season, everything, even this year, I really did think that we were going to lose our entire bean crop. It just got super hot really early, and uh, I didn't think that they were gonna make it. I really didn't. But I left them in because we were watering all the beds around it, and I didn't have anything to replace them with anyway. And they came through with this entire late se season harvest. And I absolutely, I mean, they, every single year they have produced so well for us. Last year, the beans did, had a really rough year um, because of how, how bad our smoke was. As soon as the, at, really as soon as the smoke came in, um, our beans actually stopped producing any beans on the inside they would produce pods but they were just like little lifeless shells and after the smoke cleared it was about probably two months after the smoke cleared um the beans came back and produced a bunch of beans just like this year really we didn't have as bad of this year really wasn't as bad of a smoke year as uh previous years have been but they're just they they are there you know how there's certain varieties that you grow no matter what, every single year, the dragon tongue bean is on our list every year. We prefer bush beans because they produce faster um, than a pole bean does. And we have never had a problem with them only producing one crop. Like I, I know some people will say that you only get one crop out of a bush bean, but ours produce for months as long as, you know, there's nothing stopping them like extreme heat or smoke. Okay, you guys, I set up two different styles here to show you. Um, we are going to be doing one type where we leave the beans uh, the full length of the jar. And this isn't my preferred method because um, I like to just dump them out into the pan and have them bite size. But uh, if you do like to have full length beans, this is the perfect um, method for you to do. So what you're going to do is you're just going to kind of lay your jar on its side so that they all rest to one side, right? And you are just going to pack your jar. All right, so you see how that is a nice um, full pack in there. I, I saved about three jars worth to do like this. This way does look really nice. So if you are wanting like a nice presentation for um, maybe in a Christmas gift basket or something like that, this is, this canning the beans this way does look really nice. 
All right, and the second way is I just chopped up our beans into one to one and a half inch pieces, and we are going to pack them tightly into the jars. All right, you guys, we are now going to put a half a teaspoon of canning salt or pickling salt or any non-iodized salt will be fine into each of our jars. If you're doing quarts, you can do a whole teaspoon. This is just for flavor. You can, so if you want to, you can just omit it and then add whatever seasonings you would like when you're cooking your beans when you, um, after you can. Okay, so now you are just going to take a pitcher of water and you are going to fill each of your jars up to a half an inch headspace. I'm gonna use my canning funnel just for the line on the inside to measure. If you don't have a canning funnel, you're just gonna um, fill it up to this ring right here on the neck of your jar. So because of how much um, air space is between the beans, it is a good idea to run a debubbler um, around your jars to try to get as much of the air out of them as possible. And then if you had a lot of air bubbles come out, you might end up with uh, more space at the top and you'll need to add more water on top of that. So there's not really a lot that can get onto the rims of your jars, except maybe salt, but just make sure that you wipe them clean and then you're going to do fingertip tight on your lids, which means that you are going to go until you feel resistance and then go a quarter turn farther. This is really important, especially when pressure canning, because if you go tighter than that, um, there is a good chance that your lids could buckle. I didn't mention it earlier, but we are cold packing, which means that our jars are cold, our beans are cold, our water's cold, and our canning pot is going to be cold. All right, so our jars are ready, and it is always important to do a pre-canning inspection of your canner when you are using a pressure canner. When you're using a water bath canner too, obviously it's just a little more important with a pressure canner. Okay, so you're gonna look and check that your, um, your pressure relief gasket is sitting correctly. You're going to check your gasket all the way around, make sure that it's clean, there's no debris. You're going to check your little pressure indicator tab to make sure that it goes up and down without any issues. And finally, you are going to check your pet cough valve to make sure that you can see light through it. And that means that the last time you used your canner, no debris came blowing up through it, which it shouldn't, you should never have anything blowing up through it anyways, because you let the pressure completely deplete before you open your canner, right? All right, so everything looks good with this. We are going to get our jars loaded into our canner. I already have the three quarts of water in it. It is, it is a Presto 23 quart, um, so it takes three quarts of water. I'm gonna get my jars all loaded in there and then we will start the canning process. Okay, you guys, so the first thing we are going to do is turn our burner up to high and then we are going to get our lid put on our pot. You are going to line up this arrow with this one right here, get it seated down, and then you are going to twist it shut, okay? Now we are going to wait for the pe pet cock valve to have a steady stream coming out of it and we are going to set a 10 minute timer and allow this to steam out for 10 minutes. Okay, you guys, so typically your pressure indicator will pop up when the stream is steady. So you have an idea, I know it's hard to see, um, but now we are going to set a timer for 10 minutes and let that steam. Okay, you guys, our 10 minutes is up and now we are going to put our weight onto our canner. Now, the reason that it is so important to allow your canner to completely vent for 10 minutes is because the more air that you have inside of your canner means the lower your temperature is going to be. So you really want it to be as high a temperature as possible so that you properly process your food, okay? So now what we are going to do is we have our weight on there and we are going to watch our gauge, which if you've seen in previous videos my gauge is off and I know that but it's okay because I rely on my weight as a jiggler um, but we are going to watch our gauge until it gets up to 17 which is actually 15 pounds and then we are going to 
adjust our heat and set our timer. All right, we'll be back. Okay, you guys, see my weight just started rocking and it is at 17 on my gauge, which remember, I do not go by my gauge, I go by my weight. I just have it as a reference. Now I'm going to turn my uh, temperature down to between four and six. It's hard to see back there. And let that level out. Remember, you want it to not be all crazy. See, that's a little high. You want it to be rocking gently. And we are going to set our, once that gets nice and relaxed down, we're going to set our timer for 20 minutes, 25 minutes if you are doing course, and we will be back. Okay, you guys, you see why it's important that you don't leave the room and you monitor your uh, canning pot? It builds pressure even when you have it set to a steady temperature, okay? So you got to keep an eye on it. Um, I'm going to turn this down just a little bit, about a half of a number on my stove to get it back down. All right, you guys, our timer has gone off. We are going to shut off our heat completely. And we are going to allow this to just sit. Do not touch it until this has completely stopped rocking and our gauge is down to zero, okay? You're gonna know if you don't have a gauge and you're just going off the weight. You're gonna know when this little pressure, uh, this little pressure indicator drops down and then you wait 10 minutes, okay? All right, then we will be back with the finished product. Thanks for sticking around, guys. All right, you guys, our beans are out of the canner. Um, I wanted to say, make sure, I forgot to film it, make sure that when you are taking your lid off, you always take the weight off first, and then when you open it, open it away from you, okay? Because a lot of really hot steam comes out, okay? I wanted to show you guys, this is the, I'm not gonna touch them because they're still really hot, but this is what they look like when they are the, um, when they're canned standing up straight full beans, and then these are the pieces of beans. So just in case you did care about the looks of your jars, that is the difference. And then also dragon tongue beans do not hold their purple spots when you cook them. They completely disappear. They almost turn like an off-white yellowish color, and you can see the, the water actually takes on some of the purplish color from these beans. Um, so that is totally normal. That is what is supposed to happen. And honestly, that's one of the only things that I don't love about dragon tongue beans. I wish they did keep their purple color. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments or just any uh, suggestions or comments that you might have. We love to talk to you guys. It really makes making all of these videos worth it. If you enjoyed this video, I hope that you will like and subscribe and share with your friends. And as always, have a blessed day.